think that there's anyone in this room who is not concerned about the quantity and quality of our water and the preservation of our springs. And through model partnerships here in North Florida, our local governments, our research and education partners, our business community, our residents, our environmental community, are well aware of our water issues and our agricultural community has embraced and implemented costly best management practices. President Boyd has said we're here tonight to, to talk about uh, nutrient uh, pollution as it is affecting surface waters in the state, as it is affecting surface waters here in your community. Uh, when we talk about nutrients, we're talking about both nitrogen and uh, phosphorus. And I will tell you that today, nutrient enrichment of our surface waters is by far the most challenging water quality issue that this nation regardless we need to be working collaboratively to come up with the tools and the technologies that the agricultural industry needs in order to maintain the ability to produce food as our society demands it without the risk of nutrient losses and the compromising of our natural resources associated with those springs. You've got to recognize the thing that Jerry said so well, which is that we're all sources of, we are the biggest, well, we're probably not the biggest source, but we're the growing source of Florida's water quality problems. And that relates specifically to, uh, to our wastewater treatment system. So we in the state of Florida increasingly are distributing all of that waste from those 18 million people, or soon to be 18 million people, in one way or another, back into the environment. And we all need to pay attention to exactly not just what we eat and you know where we're consuming it from, but what's happening to our waste. I'd like to say that the Swanee River Water Management District Governing Board supports the development of a scientifically-based numeric nutrient criteria. What the district board is opposed to is one that is not based on science. The one thing that I don't understand is how can the EPA set a nutrient criteria in the Suwannee District when 53% of the watershed is not even in the state? So if you want to set a nutrient numeric criteria for the state of Florida, maybe you should work on Georgia first because I have no control of what comes over the district. We spend more money investing in water quality than any other state out there. Yet the state of Florida is being singled out among all the states in the country for the federal government to step in and take over this state function. That's now what the EPA has entered into this consent decree that's been alluded to several times. That we have major concerns. What the consent decree did was EPA determined that they would set numeric criteria for lakes and flowing waters and streams by January 14th, 20, proposed the standard by January 14th, 2010, and set the standard by October 15th of 2010. This raises some major concerns, first and foremost being is something that's been alluded to once before, and that's that this is singling Florida out. We're the only state that will be having a numeric criteria, which like David said earlier, what happens when the water from Georgia and Alabama crosses the state line? It raises questions and concerns of are we responsible for cleaning up the water that comes across the state line. It also puts our ag industry at a competitive disadvantage because no other state will have such a standard and they won't, they won't exist in those states. So we will have a disadvantage in that manner. And right now our farmers and ranchers are already facing extremely tough economic times and this is only going to exacerbate those problems and um, continue with our economic hardships. Not only will farmers and ranchers be facing economic hardships, our Florida families, businesses, and state and local governments are also going to be facing these hardships.